Hey, Alex. What, Ted? Let me tell you about a little RPG called uh, Hyperdimension Neptunia. So, uh, uh, my personal favorite genre of video games, the uh, anime JRPG, uh, Hyperdimension <laughs> Neptunia. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, just keep going. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, me and Alex were both playing Hyperdimension Neptunia. Uh, Alex started playing it first. I don't remember why. It was gifted uh, to me. Fuckins, uh, gave it to me. And I'm like, well, because, because I wanted to try it out because my friends play a lot of Neptunia, two of my friends. And I was just talking to it, to, uh, Snick a lot. Jay Snick, I don't want to fucking say that shit. I'm sorry. Uh, we were just talking about it a lot. And I'm like, you know, I, I did want to give this game a shot. So... Let's give it a shot. But then fuck hands comes swooshing down and just buys it for me. I'm like, oh, well, shit. All right. So then I'm, these I These are it. Discord friends. You can find that in the description. Wink. I was, I for one, was very disappointed how many of my, I, I opened the game on Steam. I'm like, all right, here we go. Time to get my bone hurting JRPG. And I'm like, oh, I have six friends who play Hyperdimension Neptunia RE, uh, comma, birth one. I'm sorry, semi semicolon birth one. Hmm. Hmm. And Alex, of course, is one of them. How many hours do you have in this fucking game, Alex? Oh, I don't fucking know. Like, not even that many. Probably like 20. Like, I didn't put that much time into it. See, I played 15 hours of this game. I streamed most of it because it was a JRPG and it didn't, I didn't take much concentration. Uh, but, okay. So, the, for those who don't know, the gimmick for Hyperdimension Neptunia is that everyone's video game anime girls. And uh, also, like, the Sega Genesis gets a thing. I don't think anyone gave a single fuck about Sega ever. Anyone? No, okay. No. I'll, 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 all right, this is the official, both me and Alex, official, let me tell you about stance on Sega. Who gives a shit? I like Sega consoles. Yeah, because, exactly. The people who like Sega consoles are people like Alex. I Don't have a like Sega Alex. Saturn over there, right next to my big knight statue. You know, the big game for the Sega Saturn. Fuck you. Yeah, the fucking... I have my shrine. Sega sucks. They... Fuck you. Sonic wasn't very good, okay? None of their games are very good, except for Altered Beast, because that game was pretty sick. I mean, I don't play a lot of Sonic. I just like the other games to make, like Jet Set Radio and Knights. And Golden Axe. That's radio's on Xbox, though, so who gives a shit? It was made by Sega! I don't care. Okay, Sega makes video games. No also, one gives a fuck about Dreamcast. their consoles. The Sega Dreamcast, you dumb dumb. Oh, anyway. oh, man, all two games on the Sega Dreamcast. Golly gee willikers, Alex. Oh, man, you sure showed me. Anyway, asshole, the fucking, fucking Neptune herself isn't actually a real Sega console. She's a made-up one, but she's supposed to be a Sega console. That's why she's Neptune. Cause Did there's you just a Saturn- actually me on Hyperdimension Neptunia, you motherfucker? Yes, yes, actually. Yes, yes, I just fucking actually your ass right now. Anyway, the fucking the, that's why Plutia is called Plutia because she was based on a canceled console called the Pluto. Get it? Saturn, Neptune, Pluto. They're planets. They're Sega consoles. And Nep- they didn't here, plan very far. Like, no, what they if didn't. They, what if they were actually successful? What came after the Pluto? The asteroid belt. Wait, hold on. Is the asteroid belt? I know there's it's two. It's between belts. Mars and Jupiter. There's a second one, Alex. Anyway, the game has, uh, there's four main goddesses, and they're all based on, you know, the, the predominant video game companies. You got your Nintendo, you got your, Se- you got your Segas, you got your Xbox, <laughs> you got your Playstations, and, uh, you got your Nintendos. You said Nintendo I think already. that's all four. Exactly, because Nintendo was the best one. Oh, okay. Uh, and anyway, like, you know, they've all got their goddesses. And they dress up in their, like, cyberware anime girl suits. And they fight each other. And then Neptunia gets hit really hard, falls down to Earth. No, not Earth. Like, a rock. Like, formation in the sky. And then it's like, oh, man, she's got amnesia. You gotta figure out what's going on here. You gotta reunite the goddesses and find this common ground and fight this big bad person named R4. I like how you're talking like English Nept right now. Am I? Yes, now keep going. Anyway, so, uh, you know, the main quest you meet, uh, there's two main characters you start with. You start with Neptunia and then Kampa, who is supposed to be Compile Hearts, who was the developer of the game, I believe. Yes, and then IDF, and then IF, who's Idea Factory, the company that owns them. And the game just has, like, a bunch of really, really subtle characters, like uh, someone named Tekken, 
Uh, I don't know who they're based off of. <laughs> That's not even funny. I'm sorry. Keep going. And then, like, there's so there's just like dumb. Like, okay, the game got me a few times because it would have like like I would open up like Vert. Vert was the Xbox 360, and her like default ring was called a red ring. It's like ah, you fuckers got me there. You got me, us gamers, bazoopers. <laughs> us gamers, am I right? And, like, there's just stuff like that, like, there's a lot of little dumb, stupid jokes that you wouldn't understand unless you're a true gamer. And that's basically the entire game. Oh, except for, like, 99% of the game is, like, pandering to weeaboos. Well, I mean, look at it, Ted. Oh, my God. Anyway, so... The gameplay itself is probably where, like, I have the hardest, like, this, okay, like, I could play anime games. Yeah, I played fucking, I've played every Phoenix fucking Wright game. Like, I could deal, like, contrary to popular belief, I could play anime games. You know, I could play anime fighters. Like, I could be like, oh, yeah, Baikudan, that's fucking, that's worth it. I'll play Guilty Gear for that. You know, like, I could deal. Holy shit, did this game test my limits? Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. Okay. Biggest thing. So, so there's two big problems with this game. One, the gameplay got really boring after a few hours because yep. there wasn't any variety. Yep. And two, every fucking character had the animations of a meat and fuck game. It had the same goddamn tweens, like the eyebrows going, woo, woo. I could not get over it. I couldn't, after 15 hours, I could not stop looking at him thinking, oh shit, I'm playing a meat and fuck game. You, you would just hear that fucking Russian song that he stole for the games. <laughs> you just hear like, that, that fucking slow guitar start playing. Like, oh my god. It, it, it was start, I, you know what? I bet the meat and fuck dude uh, probably worked on these fucking games. No, I would not be surprised. <laughs> no, their no, budget no. was small enough. I, I, I still think that meat and fuck guy still makes games on his website, and they still look like shit. Does he? He has to have a Patreon now. Where's the meat and fuck Patreon? Please don't. Where, <laughs> please where's don't the me... meat and fuck Patreon? <laughs> Yo, no, no, no. I don't want to know if he has a Patreon because if I go there, I'm gonna be disappointed. He's gonna have like ten thousand dollars. I mean, the 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 hundred and fifty dollar award is the meat and fuck reward. <laughs> anyway, okay. So as I was saying, <laughs> the gameplay for this is okay. So it's it's like you know it's got a grid. You know, you place your characters. You know, it doesn't fucking matter where you start them at. I, the game lets you place them in weird spots, like in your half of the battlefield, because it takes place in a giant circle wherever you're standing, which is kind of nice because then you know, like when you get into combat somewhere, you're standing right there. You know. If you start combat and you're next, you're next to a wall, you know, you can't go that direction, you know, you're cornered. So that's kind of fun. Uh, but th there's a lot of missed opportunities with that, and I'll get into that. But, you know, the combat is basically, uh, you have your three dudes, they spawn in a line, you control one of them, you can move around, and, you know, within a certain distance. I don't know if it's based on speed or if everyone can only move so far. Uh, no, uh, no, it's it, there's a movement set on the characters, and some weapons and armor give them movement or take away movement, if you didn't notice. Yeah, I didn't notice. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, you deal more damage if you hit someone from the side, you deal more damage if you hit them in the back. Uh, every enemy has a health bar and a guard bar, and uh, one of them doesn't have numbers associated with them when you hit them. I'm not sure which one it is. I played for 15 hours, I had no fucking clue. Well, no, I would hit an enemy back, okay, did I deal... Was the stuff that flew out, was that guard damage? Because I used only guard damaging move? Or was it health? Or what the fuck's going on? I think the numbers that appear are HP, and then they just don't tell you how much guard damage you do. It just, like, takes away the bar. But once you deplete an enemy's guard, uh, then for the next turn, until their turn, their turn starts again, they take big damage from attacks. And so, you know, like there's, there's like a guard button, which is, I, I'm pretty sure, the only use for it is for that, like, okay, you whittle them down to really, really low guard, or, you know, really, really low guard, everyone guard up, start a next turn, you break it, and then you have everyone use their specials, and you delete the enemy. You know, I'm pretty sure that's how you're supposed to play the game. <laughs> that's the only way I've found that you're supposed to beat bosses, unless you fucking grind, grind, grind. But, so that that's, that's the, the, you know, the basics, and you got spells, you got your mana, you got all that dumb shit. 
Uh, but, like, uh, uh, the guard. So, outside of that, there was pretty much no point in ever guarding. Unless there's, like, a, an end-level character that has a taunt or something. Because, like, you could guard, and then they would just, like, the enemies would just choose a random character. You could have someone really, really close. and someone in, like, medium range. And then we would just turn around and go, I'm going to go over and one-shot Kampa. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, okay, okay, whatever. I get, uh, okay, whatever, fuck you. Or uh, my favorite thing, which was when enemies went viral. Ah, uh, God. Uh, uh, fucking... It, 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 there was a lot of dumb gameplay decisions that either I maybe I'm too dumb to understand the complex combat of Hyperdimension Neptunia, but uh, like it fucking it, enemies would seem to choose people at random to attack. I don't know if there was like an aggression bar or something like that, uh, but like character balance is all over the fucking place. If your character couldn't turn into a a, a video game robot girl, they were basically useless. Uh, they, they couldn't go HDD into their goddess form. They are just, why even bother using them? And there's no point to ever not be in goddess form. Oh, it drained some of your magic bar. whoop the shit 20 whole percent. Wowzers. Like, and then like I, like I mentioned earlier, there's viral enemies, which... Uh, you, so you go to a new area, which by the way, the areas in this game are really... Really bland. Yeah, I want to get into that once you finish, because I, I got a lot to say. Yeah, but uh, I'll just talk a little bit more about the combat here, and then I have something else I want to talk about it later. But, like, the fucking... The 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 areas in the game were super, super boring from what I got to, except, like, Last Station was the only one that was interesting visually. But the biggest missed opportunity that this game had in, like, across the entire thing was okay. So you have this this you know this big circle of combat. It never actually mattered. Like there was never a time where there was like a hole in the floor or like a rock in the middle. It's always just a flat leveled like terrain, doesn't matter. Yeah, like there was areas like the first time I got into combat and uh there was like this high level area that I unlocked and I went in there and I'm like, "Oh cool, I'm fighting these rabbits." Oh cool, it's on a, it's on like a, an incline. So you know, I can, you know, I can, you know, if I position one of my characters all the way to the left and we start the battle, they're going to be on top of that ledge. No, they aren't. They're on a flat plane and it doesn't matter. It's like, oh, okay. That would have added a lot of depth very easily, but you, uh, you didn't do it. I don't know why you didn't do it, but, uh, whatever, uh, compile hearts. Anyway, so the, the, there were the viral enemies I mentioned earlier. You go to an area. And you'd be like, okay, you know, I'm fighting, yeah, I'm fighting these butterflies. Okay, one of them went viral, uh, took four turns, and one shot all my characters. Did I miss it? Like, okay, I feel like I must have been missing something there. Was I missing something with viral enemies? Or were they just, oh, well, guess the RNG decided you're going to die now. Get good, Dad. Like, what the fuck is it supposed to do? <laughs> I have no idea. Like, when a viral enemy hits when I was on stream, I would just say, ah, shit. Because I, I sure as hell don't know what, what it means. There's, there's, I'm going to guess that there's something and someone's going to call us out on it, but neither of us can figure it out. And I'm the kind of guy who looks into stuff when he's playing to make sure I don't miss shit. You know, like in Hollow Knight, where I actually keep my eyes open on, like, Tad. Hey, shut up. But, like, I don't know. I couldn't find anything. It seems to be, like, I'm going to guess they put a buff on themselves, and if you don't, and you, you probably just didn't notice. Either of us didn't notice. And if you don't kill them fast enough, they're going to turn viral. That's my guess. I don't actually know. I don't care. I got so bored with this fucking game, man. Oh, I yeah. I care. made it to... The only reason I kept playing was because I'm like, okay, I've been to the I've been to the PlayStation area. I've been to the Xbox area. Let's check out this, the Nintendo area. Okay, that's kind of cool. Oh, I'm just going to be repeating the same two sections of the level four times. Okay, never mind. See? See, I got a little farther than that. Uh, yeah, so... Everything past where you get the 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 wee girl Loey, uh, what what was her fucking name? Her name's Blonde. Yeah, once you get past Blanc, uh, once you get her, like that's when I just stopped playing because I'm like, oh okay, this is I like I put on it because like at a certain point I I was like, man, these enemies are really tough, and I saw the level like suggested level for chapter seven is like fifty five, and my dudes are all like level thirty because I didn't stop to grind. I'm like, nah, turn it on easy mode. I'm not gonna do this shit. And even then, I got bored as shit. Because I just couldn't keep, like... The combat was not nearly engaging enough. 
you know, throw that buzzword out there. Uh, well, keep in mind that it wasn't engaging before he turned Easy Mon mode on either, I assume. Because people no. will call you out and say, like, well, Chris wasn't engaging, you put on Easy Mode. The gameplay didn't change and I went to Easy Mode. All it did was make it take less hits. There was no strategy that I was missing out on. There was no, like, oh, okay, cool, this guy's got a long range attack, so I gotta, you know... Get people and just swarm him in there, you know, lock him into this corner so he can't go to his this power up area where if an enemy stands on it in last station, you know, they get an electricity boost and they deal a big di- No, that wasn't a thing. Uh, like, here's the mini boss. Everyone get around it in a triangle formation and then hope the guy doesn't kill you. Okay, cool fight. Like, that was every fight in the game. It was just form a triangle so that he can't hit multiple characters at once. There you go. You did it. You did you it. Span heal with Kampa. And then you won, like Galley, or you used your, your fucking Plutia character and just DLC beat the game because she was busted as shit. Yep. So and like, then like a, oh, one more thing I uh, want to talk about the character balance. Whoop. So the character balance, like we said, if you don't have a hard drive, your character's useless. Iffy, completely useless. She had nothing she could contribute. The closest thing she could have to contribute is that she can attack multiple times and she can get like poison and paralysis attacks. But, like, I could just buy a ring that does that, or, like, a, I could make a DVD and give it to, you know, a Vert, who attacks six times on her basic attack, and just pow, 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 and then I do that with her Y, and oh, shit, look, they're paralyzed. Cool, I won this fight. Like, there was only one character I used that was not uh, uh, able to transform, and that was Kampa, and there's, that's for, it's because Kampa was the only one worth using, because she could heal and it only took like a hundred at like special mana points. Anyway, now you can continue, Alex. Finally, okay. Everyone, shut the fuck up. I'm gonna bitch about Neptunia just like I bitch about Overwatch. So this game fucking sucks ass. So I went into <laughs> this game wanting to like it. Everyone in the Discord, as my witness of how much I was getting into this game, I was getting into Neps and shit, and how much I was posting it and stuff. I was all aboard, all aboard this fucking cute ass nep nep train here. I was ready. So I'm playing this game and I'm streaming it for people and I'm actually having a pretty good time for the first like 10 hours. Like there's funny jokes, you know, all the maps suck ass and are boring looking, like he said. Uh, all the complaints about the map terrain, I 100% agree with on him. And, uh, I got, I, I have to stop. I couldn't do it. But once I got to uh, chapter seven, and I just got Tekken, I did this just last night. Well, I guess two nights. Oh, so ago you got now. Tekken, the subtle video game reference. Yeah. So I got Tekken, and when I get her, she's level sixty. And my guys, my, my my neps are all level forty five, and I'm like, you know, I really don't feel like doing chores in a single player game right now. You can go kill yourself. See, I just I hate grinding. I'll do it if it's not that bad, but when or it's, it's engaging, or, or yeah, or at least it's fun. Like, like say, uh, in what am I gonna think of? Hyrule Warriors. In Hyrule Warriors, you know, which is just a Musou game, it's completely repetitive, right? Uh, to unlock the Master Sword, you need to get every other weapon in the game, and then with the Master Sword, kill two twenty five thousand enemies. And I did this one level. You can get an easy like a thousand or like one and a half thousand each time you run through it. 20, like around 20 times to do that and that was still more fun and rewarding than playing the actual regular gameplay of Hyperdimension Neptunia because as Tad says there's only two ways to fight you either fight a normal enemy where you just hit attack and then, and then left bumper on your controller if you're using a controller like we were uh, to just skip the attack animations and blitz through it really fast or put a triangle formation around a boss. The only boss that has ever been engaging was actually this one at, like, the game show, or uh, the, the technology show in Last Station, which was like, uh-oh, he has these two drones that stop your items and stop your spell use. That's pretty cool. Now, maybe there's more past Chapter 7 that do that. I'll, I'll admit I didn't find them then. But, uh, fuck it. That was one fight that stood out to me from all the others, because it had one mechanic in it compared to everything else, which is just... Just Unga. Just transform and just hit them really hard and they'll die. Yeah, Unga Bunga your way through the bosses. So, like, I wanted to like this game a lot. Much like Overwatch. I tried getting into it. I was streaming this. I was having fun with the chat. 
And I just can't do it anymore, man. Because it's just the same fucking game. And unlike other things that are the same game, like, I can play Star Fox 64 a hundred times over and never get tired. Because that game's fun. I can play a bunch, I can play Final Fight, which is just a beat em up, which is pretty much the same game no matter what you're doing. I can play through goddamn Knights. I can play through goddamn fucking, uh, I can play these MOBAs. I can play all these MOBAs which are almost essentially the same game with like a varying difference of like your matchup maybe. But I can't stand, I can replay all these, but I cannot stand this boring ass combat in Neptunia. And the worst part is, is that not only does it not change, but neither do the fucking maps. I was talking to J-Stick, like, the, that factory you're in with that little robot boss where you're hanging out with Noir, and she's like, oh, I don't, I'm not actually a goddess, haha, Lamau. And she's, like, trying not to transform and shit. You fight that stupid guy who's, like, an asshole with the glasses. That, like, factory is reused every game and he posted he posted a screenshot to me of neptunia 3 he's like hey dude doesn't this look familiar i'm like and that's actually i think the turning point when i started hating the game i was like oh goody where i just died inside because not only is everything playing the same and looking the same but it's gonna be like that forever yeah the care the girls are cute and the humor is pretty funny but when 80 just debatable debatable it made me laugh but uh Okay, when about 60 to 70% of your game is the most boring, uninspired, unengaging, I guess is a word, not, not engaging fucking combat ever in the world, then fuck off. I don't care. It, I, I appreciate the fact that I can at least skip moves. That's really good. Every RPG in the world should do that. Or every turn-based, you know, JRPG or whatever the fuck should do that. Because, like... When I see, like, Plutia's fucking, uh, super laser attack, it's cool, but I don't want to see it ten times. I'll just hit left bumper now. Like, that's a nice yeah. feature. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. What's on my note card here? Oh, yeah. Bored to tears. I couldn't do it anymore. I had this horrible, like, oh, like, dilemma where, like, I wanted to beat this game because it was gifted to me, but I just can't do it. Maybe in a year I'll go back to it out of boredom. But, like, when I have all these new games that I'm playing, like, I can replay Hollow Knight all I fucking want. Or I can play fucking Gigantic. I can play Huge. I can play Large, which I'm loving right now. <laughs> I, like, when I have that, why would I go, like, why would I, why would I have this game that's, like, replayable and really fun to play and, and mess around with other people? Why would I go down, d- down ten steps to play some boring-ass game that's only mildly funny? Well, Alex, the reason why you would do that is because of the sexy anime girls. For the waifus. And I was going to go, like, all right, all right, real talk. Everyone shut the fuck up. It's waifu time. Because that's all this game's about. I'm saying Not it just right yet. now. There's a little bit before waifus. Really? What the hell okay. else is there? Because we already said how repetitive this boring game is. And, and repetitive in the bad way, not, not, not in a replayable way. There's a difference between repetitive and replayable. Get the, See, remember there's that. Just a short, there's a short thing I want to talk about here. And that was, okay, so... <clears throat> The idea of, like, you know, like, oh, it's the console war. Like, okay, that's a funny, goofy concept. Okay, yeah, they use anime girls as the main selling point. Okay, all right, good enough. Uh, why is Xbox a big fantasy world? Like, I get PlayStation being literally Final Fantasy VII, but, like, why was Xbox... Because there was Xbox, which is big fantasy world. I don't know if Neptunia had her own world. I never got that far, and I'm not going to. It, it's, uh, it's the first city you're in. The, with fucking the one thing. with, like, oh, oh, that... That doesn't even look like anything related to Sega. That's it's just dumb. it's just a generic like city. That that's her it's thing, Planet Tune or whatever the fuck it's called. I don't remember. But like, un- like regarding like the areas, uh, every single one of them looked straight out of a Korean free to play MMO. I was gonna say that the very first like grassy plain world with like the trees. When I saw those trees have little like technology floating around them, I'm like, wow, it's straight out of Fly for Fun, isn't it? <laughs> Fly for Fun. <laughs> But like, okay, here's the things that I pointed out that made it look and feel like a Korea, like a free to play MMO. One, you're stuck on like this a uh, very obvious path. You can't stray outside. You know, you can't walk around a tree. Two, everything had huge open like flat space between it and gigantic ceilings. Three, enemies were just kind of there in like a short area. And four, and this was the worst one. Your character's walk animations don't actually match their movement speed, and so they're running and they're just gla- they're just gliding across the accesses. Yeah, that always looks bad. I hate that. Also, uh, 
funniest thing about this game is when you did... So everyone had, like, these big anime flashy attacks. Where it's like... Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And it would like zoom in on their face, but their face was like a 2D sprite. And so it would be the the Nintendo one was the funniest one because she would like spin around a hammer, it would zoom in on her face, and it would very like just like change to another low res texture and like let go of the hammer as like she's sl- she's gliding along the fucking X and Y plane, like going woo woo woo. And it looked so fucking bad. It looked so bad. Oh my god. But speaking of things looking terrible, so the designs of, the, of like, this this entire game is basic, like, I understand that this game was made with low budget. I, like, I hope the other games improve on it and they actually, like, change combat to be like, whoa, hey, you know, here's all this extra stuff that we added in. But, like, the main reason, they, I feel like they intentionally were like, nah, fuck, we don't need to worry about the combat that much. Put it in there, have it have some kind of somewhat unique gimmick, and then put everything into the character design. Because... The character design is good in this game. You can tell from a character's silhouette, you can see a lot of who they are. Like, just from a distance, you can get a good look at their idea, like, who they are and their personalities. Because they are flatter than Paper Mario partners and propped up by dumb anime tropes with a heap with a heap and help and a fan service and Yuri bait. Jesus Christ. So what do you want me to say? Yeah, like, you're right. Like, like, well, <laughs> What do you want? What do you want me to say? Want me to want me to argue that? Like, dude, it's a fucking it's Zeptune. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, here's the thing, Alex. <laughs> Who is your favorite character? And I'll tell you why she's terrible. Okay, okay, okay. What is it? Waifu time? Yes, it's fu- the only fucking. You, you thought all this gameplay shit? No, we didn't give a shit. No one gives a shit about the gameplay. That's, <laughs> the, that's the preamble. Who gives a fuck about that? We're right. here to talk about why Alex's waifu taste is terrible, and All why right. mine is much better. Real shit. Everyone shut the fuck up. As much as I didn't get into this game, as much as I tried, I can say one thing for certain, that Blonde is the best girl. Wrong. Oh. Objectively wrong. <laughs> wrong. Oh, okay, mister. <laughs> well, please, please. I already know who you liked, and I already know that everyone's going to disagree wrong. with you, because I... I'm on the correct side. Everyone likes Blonde. So much so that there is someone on fucking 4chan who said, All right, guys, I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask Compile Hearts for Blonde's hand in marriage. And he sent them a proposal letter. And they're like, Yeah, sure, that's all right, but you better take good care of her. And everyone's just like, Holy shit, he actually did it. And then in the next game after that, they put that in the game, where it's like, heh, Blonde's like, heh, I'll have you know, someone's already proposed to me. So <laughs> canon, someone is actually, someone married his waifu. Blonde's the best girl, now continue. So, okay, so I was going to, so, okay, the objective worst girl, we could both agree on this, is Neptunia. Because, and I've got a, I've got nine numbers here as to why she's the worst girl. One, <laughs> she's dumb. Two, she's stupid. Three, I hate her. Four, she's annoying. Five, I have to cross off because I put Alex likes her because I thought she was your waifu. Six, you Dumbass. like her English voice. You like her English voice. You're a fucking idiot, Alex. I you love... played this game in English. No, 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 no. Everyone, shut the fuck up. Waifu talk's over for five seconds. <laughs> shut up. Waifu talk never ends. Shut up, everyone, right now. English Nep, not the other characters, Nep herself is fucking adorable because she sounds Wrong. like a, she sounds like she's drunk off her ass. Ro- oh, okay, you that's better true. keep walking there, pal. Your face is a no can do for me. She's adorable. <laughs> I fucking love English Nep because she. I just picture every line of dialogue she says. She's like, like, like doing a Jack Sparrow, like l- lurching back and like wagging her fingers around. That's how I imagine English Nep. The English in this game, I would turn it on there when I wanted a laugh, and holy shit, it was so bad. Okay. I'm not so anyway, being as I was censored, saying, I'm just off screen. Nap, nap. Fucking god, it was so bad. Uh, okay, number seven. She has dumb HDMI port sweater pulley things. Those are stupid. <laughs> uh, eight. Neptune is a dumb planet that's a middle ground between Pluto and Uranus, while not being as funny as Uranus. And number nine, she has really dumb hair. <laughs> I think Nep is cute, but she's not the best girl. That's blonde. That's bunny blonde okay. blonde. Alex, you're wrong. I'll give you 12 reasons why Kampa is the objective best girl in Hyperdimension Neptunia. Oh, number thank one, God it wasn't Vert. Number one, that's terror. Number two, that's terror. 
Number three, she's the most capable of the NepNet crew. Four, best design. Five, intelligent, nihilistic, and with a wicked sense of humor, just like me. What? Number six, she's got the best guard damage and free status effects. Seven, best healing from a non-OP DLC character. Eight, most palatable English voice actor, because she's just Amy Rose. Number nine, cuter than Blanc. Number ten, most useful non-goddess since she has low SP heals. Number 11, better than Alex's waifu. 12, it's literally me. 13, has the least accessories and outfits because she's already perfect. 14, she's not Alex's waifu. <laughs> okay, well... Debate me! Okay, so my my statement earlier is people are actually going to side with you. I thought it was you were going to say Vert. So uh, I guess I was wrong. Yeah, yeah luckily, you're wrong in two parts now. Luckily... It wasn't Vert, because Vert's the actual worst girl, not Nep. Because Vert's entire character is that Sakura-Con commercial. I like anime, and manga, and gaming! You guys, you guys need to get your butts to Sakura-Con! Like, that. That's Vert. Vert is just this stupid fucking loser. She's this fucking big, tall, motherly type fucking anime character. But... She's a gamer, guys. You better fucking... You better she's watch a... out, because she's going to kick your butt in the <laughs> video game world. I can't, I can't do it without laughing. I'm sorry. Anyway, she's a fucking shut-in neat, who's also like... She's two character archetypes m- m- mashed together, and English just makes her really cringy, because every time she opens her mouth, she's like, oh, hey, Vert, what are you doing here? Like, oh, I was just out shopping for this hot new game. And it's just like, I just keep thinking of, gotta get your butts to Sakura Khan now! Every time... Gotta get your butts to Nekutsu <laughs> Every time she fucking talks. And I just hate her. I hate her so much. I also hate Kampa, but not for any actual reason. I just what, don't because like... because she's the best girl and you're jealous? No, because my other friend likes Kampa, so and he was watching the stream, so I'm like, oh, well, he likes her, so I obviously can't ever use her. So I immediately got the DLC character, Plutie, and just used her instead. Savage. And uh, Iris Heart is hot as fuck, by the way. See, I didn't I didn't understand her character, like, okay, because I, I had, like, her abilities, and I'm like, oh, okay, like, her basic attack goes from, like, slap to, like, like, like punishment. I'm like, okay, that's kind of a weird name. I'm like, all right, whatever. And then I turn, I accidentally turned on English, and I'm like, oh, oh, I get it now. She's that stupid anime gimmick. She, I she, fucking hate this. The amount of times I said I fucking hate this game <laughs> while I was playing Neptunia. Hey, she's oh the my stupid God. dominatrix type. Fuck you, I like it. So that, that, yeah, that, whatever, that, that, that's Alex, uh, we've already proven that you have terrible opinions. Ooh, he said it. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> All right, all right, right. Right now, in the fucking comment section, who's the better girl, blonde or the one he likes? <laughs> exactly. The best part about Kampa is that she has the least amount of voice lines. <laughs> so by default, she's like the best character. Well, no, technically she speaking, sh- she sh- she doesn't fucking sc- like yeah, she doesn't talk all the time. Just if there was a character that was a mute that just didn't talk, ten out of ten, best Neptunia character. You know what? Okay, okay. So Neptunia is has this uh. This flaw immensely. So it's this thing called too fucking much talking. I yeah, was talking. I to accidentally, a- uh, I accidentally hit the X button in like a conversation, and it didn't stop until like ten seconds later when I realized it. I was like, "Oh shit!" Well, I didn't miss anything important. Well, okay, okay, okay. So like, I don't mean like in, in that. I mean in combat, in the gameplay, characters say way too fucking much shit for attacking and stuff. So like, gonna hit ya. I'm gonna beat ya up. Nep nep nish tio, or the fuck she says. Fucking. See, I didn't have to deal with this because I put it on Japanese, so it just sounded like gobbledygook to me. I literally just said something in Japanese, though. Well, in, in garbled Japanese, it didn't actually mean anything. Uh, exactly. Fuck you. Anyway, anyway. So, like, I've been talking to this. This is actually kind of a little, not even really a Neptunia thing, but a, like a side thing. But, like,. I've noticed that in a lot of video games, they've been kind of going overboard with voice acting for things, and I'm going to use one example that's been way overblown. League of Legends, because I haven't complained about that enough yet. So, like... The new character, doesn't he have, like, fucking 17 minutes of audio? No, he has, like, 14. But, like, so, like, Orin, Orin, or whatever the fuck, he's supposed to be this, 
like quick to the point, doesn't no nonsense, doesn't even like like his team, doesn't talk to him kind of guy. Where like when everyone on the team dies, he goes like, "Oh, good job, guys." And like he's just an asshole, right? And like he mm-hmm. has some lines that are like some cool flavor ones. Like if he's walking around the, he's he's like a builder. So when he's walking around the base, he's like, "Hmm, loose cobblestone there. Hmm, the walls are pretty good, I guess." Like that's kind of cute. That adds to his character and like his profession. But he doesn't need lines for stopping his back. He doesn't need lines for getting pentakills. He doesn't need lines for taunting and responding to taunts and all this other shit. That's just extra stuff you're wasting money on. And a character that's really guilty of this, two characters, is Rakan and Zaya. Their whole gimmick is that they're, like, meant for each other. They're fucking, they're, like, actually, like, husband and waifu and shit. So all they do is, like, flirt, each, flirt with each other like, while they're in lane. But, they, but like, Rakan has, uh... Because I went and looked at his. He has movement. He has movement, parentheses, near Zaya, which is like 20 more lines. Then he has <laughs> attacking, then attacking, parentheses, in melee range. I'm like, yeah, that was a well use of your money. Then attacking, parentheses, when Zaya is nearby. And then taunting, taunting, parentheses, when Zaya is nearby. And they have like three different taunts. And it's just like... You don't need all of that shit. You want to know what made some of the older characters in League, uh, some of their lines, like, say, Garen yelling Demacia when he spun Iconic? Because he only said that out loud. That's all he said. When you were fighting a Garen, he wouldn't say anything other than Demacia. When you fight a Fiddlesticks, he doesn't say anything unless he alts, and he, and he does his generic laugh. It's not even a unique line. Yeah. But then you like, have, Unless like, you're like me, and you, uh... Uh, for m- any character I can get away with it in the game, like Overwatch, when I play Reinhardt, I bound his melee to, like, hello. In League, I bound my mouse wheel click to laugh for every character I play. And so every character I play, whenever I, especially, it's, I'm especially guilty of this with Vager, or Viger, every time I get someone with the E, I spam his joke button. What's black and blue and about to show you the definition of pain? Because it's a terrible joke, it's not funny. It's like when I was playing Overwatch, this dude bound his, like, left click to McCree saying, I'm your huckleberry. <laughs> and it wasn't funny, it's a shitty line, but after you hear it so many goddamn times of just, bang, 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 triple kill, triple kill, I'm your huckleberry, it becomes really fucking funny. Well, my, my thing is that, like, oh. the reason things become, like, iconic to characters is because they say one, like, good thing that you just associate with that character. You associate Demasi with Garen. Or I'm going to use Han as an example, because Han has very little, like, voice lines. Characters have, like, four or something. People can quote, like, a Dota character, because Dota character, uh, original, like, Dota character, like, Warcraft 3 characters. You can quote a Warcraft 3 unit. Because they only have three movement and three attack lines, and then like a death sound. That's it. It's very minimal. Job's Cause, done. Because because it, it was an RTS. You, know, you you technically were tabbing through a lot of units, you know. But like you mm-hmm. can like say go to any like forum board anywhere and just post like a picture of like a Warcraft three unit and then say like a quote and people will start quoting the fucking thing. So, or like Starfuck sixty four. You could fucking say. <laughs> You could be like, fucking, here come the little hyenas now. And then people will just start spamming different random quotes from Star Fox 64. Because, but they're, again, they're a playable game, but like, they, these three characters only have that one or two, three, one to three lines, and that's it. But when you have 20 something lines, none of them are gonna stick. I don't know what Rakan actually says. I just know he doesn't shut the fuck up. Same thing with well, Zaya. But here's the thing, here's I don't how know you what get she around says. that, Alex. She just doesn't shut up. And this goes back to the How you get now. around it? Yeah, you just say, nep, nep, because that's really funny. If you just keep saying it, people will laugh. It's great. But, like, see, watch this. Nep, nep. <laughs> Aw, man. Hey, look, you can't pronounce Neptunia's name. <laughs> we have fun here. But, like, you know, that doesn't get old after literally the first time it's done. I'm glad that every character has that joke. But, like, with with, with this fucking, with Neptunia, because they have so many different attack lines, I don't really, like... I mean, I guess with this combat, though, they kind of need to have multiple lines because it would be really grating if I heard only one for, like, 90 hours of gameplay. I don't know. I just feel like when you just have characters that never shut up, nothing's going to actually stick. When you have a character that only says about four or five fucking voice lines, like, say, in, old, in you know, Warcraft 3 or, like, Han, sure, they might get annoying if they talk a lot, but you're all, they're going to kind of do this 
positive, like, negative effect to you, where, like, you're gonna remember what these characters say. Like, Hammerstorm and Han, one of his movement lines is, now we're singing from the same hymn sheet. He only has, like, four movement lines, so you're gonna always hear him say, now we're singing from the same hymn sheet. Like, all, like, every other, like, <laughs> click. But, you, you get used to it, and you, you just associate with the character. Like, with my friends to piss because he played a lot of Hammerstorm if you just, just piss him off you can just say oh man that was a really good joke now we're singing from the same hem sheet and he'll just be like oh fuck you because he knows what that is <laughs> he, he associates it with the character you get it I don't associate anything with the Naps I don't associate anything with any of the new league heroes because they don't shut the fuck up less is more like, in Star Wars 64, I could quote fucking Star Wolf, and, like, everyone's gonna know what that is. Like, I could say, Daddy screamed real good before he died. Fucking, I know that's Pigma. I know that immediately. But if he was a League hero, he would have 20 different taunts about your dad. None of them would would be memorable. <laughs> you get what I mean? Does your jersey come in men's? Does your mom come in men's? You go full-on NFL crunch time. A change the inflection on your taunt. You're a bitch. Anyway, I wish uh, the characters would shut the fuck up a little. That's what's great about the old JRPGs. When you attacked, there wasn't any voice acting yet in video games, so you didn't have to hear anything and get fucking tired of it. Imagine Chrono Cross if every character had to yell out their attack when they did it and you couldn't skip it. Like, fucking Christ, I, I wouldn't be able to play that game. At least you can skip it in Neptunia, though, so whatever. I don't know. Uh, for, long story short, uh, game's very boring. Uh, it's only mildly funny. The waifus aren't enough to carry me through it. Fuck it. And fuck all the sequels that just reuse all the assets and don't actually add anything. At least Neptunia U was a spinoff that was like a fucking action game made by the Center and Kagura guys. So it could at least entertain me because I could hit stuff and move and shit. See... I want to say, like, I want to believe that we're in a world where these people are like, all right, cool, we finally got the money to make, you know, an actual Neptunia game. We saved our company from bankruptcy with this. Okay, Neptunia 2, let's make this bigger and better. I, I hope so. I haven't done any. I haven't done much research on that. Golly gee, I sure hope that's the case. He showed me a screenshot of the one dungeon from the first game being reused in the second and third game. I don't think so, Tad. I think it's going to be the same couple dungeons again. By the way, that like factory, I was in the anime because it's just shown so much. It's just like a scene in the world, or just a place in the world, I guess. So like, yeah, I think it's repeated enough to make it on the fucking cartoon. So yeah, fuck it, fuck this game I'm out. I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I don't care. I'll, I'll listen to those stupid, weird ASMR things, like, I want to touch blonde all over, or whatever the fuck. Those are nice. Excuse me? But I'm not going to... There's, there's a, I want to touch X character all over for, like, every girl in the game. And, like, uh, what if you, like, married to a goddess? What if blonde was your wife? I was listening to all of those because, you know, I'm me. And they're cute, I guess, but that's not enough for, to... You know, that doesn't require me to grind in this boring-ass fucking game. I don't know if you could see my face in my audio track there. <laughs> hey, I gotta make sure I tell you about everything about this piece of shit game. Anyway, Neptunia sucks. Uh, I, I couldn't do it. I wasn't strong enough. I couldn't do it, and I wanted to play it. Kampa was not enough to get me through to the rest of the game, so, oh well. I'm sorry you wasted $20 on us. Anyway, so that'll do it for this episode. Uh... I'm going to do the dumb plugs here. Uh, I mean, the good plugs, all that good, good plugs, like that uh, Monster Brand Energy. Get that sip. Monster Brand Energy, their tagline, uh, ride that purple walrus energy, my dudes. Come on. What are you, dumb? What? That's their tagline, Alex. Haven't you, haven't you ever had a Monster Brand Energy? Just mm -mm. keep going. <laughs> There's a website in the description here. Uh, we host the podcast on YouTube and iTunes and Google Play. Uh on that website, www.lmtya.com, you can find links to all the Twitter shit. Uh, there's a Patreon where people give us money, and it's great because we get the audio equipment that... Uh, I don't know if you know this, Alex, but sound foam costs a lot of money. Like, I don't, you, I don't you, even you know what that is. You have to get a lot of sound foam. It's a, yeah, of course you don't, Alex. You don't know what sound foam is. Look at this chump. Uh, but as we mentioned earlier, uh, there's a Discord where we hang out and you can go in there and get up to our shenanigans with us. We, we, you know, I, uh, I've overused the sitting backwards on the chair to have a real talk. So I'm just going to say it's pretty fun. Okay. Uh, also listen to revival. It's a lot of fun. The first few episodes are really bad. I'm working on remastering them. I just have to kind of swoosh it in there. 
because I got a lot of crazy stuff happening. You know, I'm a busy man. I, I, I want to go in there because I have the audio files. I'm going to fix them up, I swear, at some point. But Revival's a lot of fun. You should do it. Uh, this week's might be a little delayed because Dan and Michael, ju- like, Dan just got to Japan. But we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, uh, that'll do it for this episode. Alex, do you have anything, any last words to say about Hyperdimension Neptunia re uh, semicolon birth one? Uh, yes, I want to touch Blonde all over. Okay.